the strange thing to me about the younger Dryas um, cataclysm, whatever it was, whether it was the onset or the end, is that you have these places like in Siberia where there's just a mass amount of mammoth bones under the tundra, mm -hmm. right? There's all these remains concentrated. And then supposedly the human population was pretty high at that point too. But where are the mass amounts of bones of humans under tundra? Well, you, Kyle, are hitting upon what I consider to be one of the most interesting unexplained questions about this whole phenomenon. It's where are the abundant human remains? Where are the Clovis remains? And we, we, we're going to address that. But at this point, we know that they were there. We see their campsites. We see their, their, their villages, their, their uh, migratory paths. We see their toolkits, their debitage mounds, all of that. It, they've, they've left lots of evidence for their having existed all over unglaciated North America. Yet, where are they? Where do they bury themselves? I mean, where do they inter their dead? Uh, it's weird that none of that stuff has been found. Even right. people that are fossilized, but you would think that there would be, you know, burial sites. I don't yeah. know. And what is it? The an Anic site? Somebody mentioned it earlier. Anzig. 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 Thank you. The Anzig site might be the only case of a Clovis yeah. specimen. Right. Yeah. And it's strange, too. It's like, it's, it's, uh, there's a, there's a, there's two child, uh, remains there, and one of them is not Clovis. It's two thousand years younger than the Clovis skeleton. Anzic two is. Mm -hmm. so it's, really, it's very weird. <laughs> yeah, so, it is weird. Yeah, I, I when Gra uh, Graham was writing um, America before, we communicated somewhat on the Anzic site, and I was able to dig up a few things uh, specifically on that for him. But you know, it's been what two, three years now, and I need to go back and review what the specifics w were. But yeah, it was—it's bizarre. And then really, um, at the time, that was where I really began to confront this this unanswered question of, well, where are they? If, where are they? Right, yeah. exactly. Where are they? Yeah. So also, I just looked this up. The Black Death, also known as the Bubonic Plague, Black mm -hmm. Plague, uh, resulted in the deaths of an estimated seventy-five to two hundred million people in Eurasia between 1347 and 1351. Okay, 1340. I said 13, around 1342. I yeah, was kind of that's in the right. ballpark. But, but the conditions that led to it were already underway by 1342. Well, think if we had to, in the modern day, if we had something that killed 200 million people. Yeah. That yeah. would be... Well, that would be two-thirds two, two the population of, of the U.S., right. basically. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 of course, we have... You know, we have drugs and things today and, and much better ways of treating that kind of stuff. But again, all of that depends upon the infrastructure being intact. Yeah. And people elsewhere being able to help people who are under. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So, yeah. So here, this is a, we'll pull this up. This is um, a great slide here because it really helps to show like this is an example this is clovis age quarries and here's three sites adams kentucky uh carson connecticut short tennessee which is the name i guess of the the, the primary discoverers of it so you've got kentucky tennessee and south carolina which were all active quarries for about between three to five hundred years that so were being actively quarried and you can see like the total number of artifacts over here on the left, right? So you've got a lot of artifacts, a thousand artifacts that are found there in Kentucky. You've got 800 that are found in, in Tennessee and almost uh, 500 found at the Topper site in South Carolina. Then you get to 12,900 years ago and then look what happens. Yeah. So here's the number of artifacts post Clovis. Yeah, so here you had all of this activity going on right up to this threshold, and then boom, it's cut off. And so it's evidence like this that suggests that, you know, humans were as much a victim of these great changes as the woolly mammoths and all the rest of the megafauna. And that, in fact, right. it's not the humans, uh, you know, and, and if the humans are struggling to survive and seeing their population numbers collapse, I don't think that they were going to be busy, busy slaughtering 10 to 12 million mammoths worldwide. Right. And humans are our megafauna. We, you know, in general are over 100 pounds. So we count as mammals that are over 100 pounds. Megafauna. Yeah, we do. We, we count. Habitat. Same habitat. So. 
Same habitat, right. Yeah, here's, let's see, what's this one? Uh, yeah, so here's the, this is just the, the topper quarry itself. And so notice what happens here. Here's the younger driest boundary is uh, represented by these red dots. And you can see that there was consistent, uh, consistent occupation of this site for, for centuries. And then all of a sudden, yeah. down it goes, post Clovis. But again, what, what, hap what does that again suggest? This is, um, oh, and this is from Malcolm LeCompte's paper, um, who we uh, joined in the round table with this, to discuss the origin of the Carolina Bays a couple of years ago. And he was also the, the lead author of the, the great debunking of the debunkers. Um, <laughs> that were attempt yeah. <laughs> Although um, Malcolm does not, care for the theory of Tony Zamora, the ice boulder hypothesis. Oh, yeah, he didn't like that one? He doesn't like that one. Yeah, there, there's a number of issues with it, but, you know, I'm not taking any sides on that. I'm just waiting to see more evidence um, and how the Carolina Bays may fit in with these events or not, as the case may be. I'm inclined to think that they do somehow, but the Carolina Bays are an unresolved question at this point. And, right. yeah. So, but, but the topper site is right out there in Carolina Bay country and whatever the, 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 the solution to Carolina Bays is, I think it's a, it's a very interesting question because, because they're a bizarre phenomena. And again, we'll, we'll put that down as our list on our list for upcoming topics to address. Um, that says there was a decline in core usage of greater than 99% that persisted for approximately 600 years. So it was 600 yes. years before people showed back up and started quarrying it again and leaving our Yes. Wow. Yes. Yes, that, that's exactly right. <laughs> a decline in quarry usage greater than 